Law enforcement authorities are currently combing the scene while probing the circumstances surrounding this brazen shooting. Let's get you more on this. Bring in Umshatuze Municipality's communications manager, uh, Bongani Gina, who joins us via our video link this morning. Uh, Bongani, it's lovely to see you, albeit under these circumstances. Thanks very much indeed for making time. The statement from the municipality is just three lines long, so I was hoping as a start you could just get us in on what happened. Yeah, it's um, good morning to you and your listeners. Um, we woke up to the very sad news as we got in here in the office. In fact, um, there was a podcast meeting ahead of the council meeting that was meant to sit here today at the city of Mshats, who's the head office in the chat screen. Uh, when, while there was a caucus meeting, when the mayor, the city manager, and the leadership and the councillors were in the caucus meeting, the bodyguards were waiting at the foyer, uh, not far from where the meeting was taking place. Uh, apparently, one of the mayor's bodyguards uh, came uh, and shot uh, the city manager's bodyguard and while he was leaving escaping trying to leave the building another bodyguard shot him as well so as a result we had two fatalities mayor's bodyguard and the city manager's bodyguard my goodness so this was a feud between bodyguards that's right that's correct unfortunately and uh, so it was the conflict between the two bodyguards Wow, okay, the obvious question from that is, um, do you know what might have been at the center of something like this? It was just a, a conflict that colleagues would usually have at work, but unfortunately this one escalated to a, a different level, uh, to another level. And uh, in fact, uh, the mayor was having a conversation with the mayor just now, and uh, both with the mayor and the city manager, and both of them are saying they've been aware of this for it. has been going on. And so they've instructed then uh, the deputy city manager for community safety, who's also responsible for security at the municipality, to intervene and call the meeting to resolve the food or the conflict between the two bodyguards and um, today well they were meant to meet because the mayor's bodyguard that uh, first shot was actually off duty today but he came to add so that he could attend the meeting to resolve their issue uh, but uh, unfortunately uh, he couldn't control uh, his uh, emotions and uh, he charged and uh, attacked the under bodyguard Oh, Bongani, this is incredibly distressing because usually the threat is from the outside, right? In fact, whenever we hear of councillors being in some kind of shooting incident, the presumption is that the you know, assailants are coming from elsewhere and there's questions around whether or not there's a political motive. But for the threat in this instance to be ironically from the people who are meant to protect councillors, it really complicates the situation, doesn't it? Very much so. It really complicates the situation because it's the people that you expect that they're the one providing protection and they're uh, avoiding conflicts at all times. Uh, but unfortunately, we are in this situation now. What happens to council activities moving forward? I mean, you know, we know that KZN itself, given the kind of year we're going to have, is typically a site, sadly, of violence. You would need a bodyguard now more than ever. Um, tell us about, you know, in what ways the operations for the municipality are likely to be affected now. Unfortunately, even today, we, the council or the speaker had uh, to actually uh, cancel the council meeting that was supposed to sit today, which was actually uh, going to, the, to be the mayor presenting uh, the budget to the council for uh, budget adoption. Unfortunately, uh, that had to be postponed or rather canceled that meeting because uh, some of the councillors witnessed or could hear the gunshots and they saw what had happened. So, so uh, they went in the right states. It wouldn't be uh, wise as much as it's compliance to adopt the project and to have it passed. But uh, the circumstances were beyond uh, anybody's imagination or control. Uh, so uh, the speaker will probably have to call a virtual uh, count special council meeting just for that one um, item. But uh, going forward, as you correctly put it, this uh, does raise concern even uh, because now these people will always cross paths. Even their colleagues now that uh, have been close to uh, both these bodyguards that are late and uh, even the one that actually uh, shot, the one that was trying to run away. You can imagine uh, 
the food that should be there. But we believe that the police and uh, as well as um, uh, the leadership will come with uh, solutions as to how to make sure that this conflict does not uh, go any further. Absolutely. There are also going to be questions about the training of these bodyguards. And I hope this doesn't sound insensitive because lives have been lost and our thoughts certainly go out to the families that are now bereaved. But how long, for example, had in bodyguards been working in the municipality? Because you'd expect someone with such an important position to have the temperament to be able to control their temper at the very least, especially when they're handling lethal weapons like guns. Right. They are definitely trained and professional bodyguards. In fact, the one that first attacked the mayor's bodyguard was SAPS prior to him becoming the bodyguard. He was working for SAPS and uh, he's been with the municipality for over 10 years uh, because he worked with the previous administration as well, was uh, the bodyguard to the previous mayor. So he's quite an experienced guy when it comes to his work. Suffice to say that, that the mayor has also been taken aback by what's happened. I mean, if you are um, attached to one of the more experienced bodyguards, the last thing on your mind is that they would die in this way, if you know what I mean. Absolutely. He, he was indeed the mayor's confidant, uh, aide uh, and bodyguard. He was very close. He would drive in the, like, in the mayor's car. So, yeah, it's, the, the mayor is to the himself. He is quite the same with the city manager. Uh, the other bodyguard that uh, uh, also passed away on his side was very close to him as well. Uh, so both of them, they're comforting each other. Both of them suffered loss. Sure. You've alluded to this conflict potentially escalating. Is that a real concern for the municipality, that the colleagues of these two bodyguards who are clearly at opposing sides for whatever reason may very well want to avenge the other person? Am I taking it too far here? We, we, we're hoping that it will not get that far because uh, the mayor and the city manager are fine. They're working very well together. And both of them has, has been condemning, constantly condemning this food, which they didn't think it would escalate to this much, to this far. So that is why they, both of them asked the deputy city manager for community services to intervene and make sure that this conflict ends. Uh, I'm sure now they're going to take, we as the municipality will take more stringent measures to make sure that the people, their, their, their emotions, uh, their, their, uh, to, make, to have them evaluated, uh, all of them, in fact, evaluated, uh, because as you are saying, it's an election time, they're going to be need, needed more than ever. Principals are working overnight, they're spending a lot of time on the roads, uh, traveling around, so all you need at in times like this is people you trust, people you know they're stable in the mind and emotionally and mentally, they're fit to do their job. I think then definitely the municipality will have to, once again, with the assistance of the SAPS, have to go the right channels or the right way of assessing their capabilities and ability to carry on with the work. Yeah, I'm going to be Apologies for interrupting you there. Before I let you go, I have to ask this question again. I think you, you may have answered it. Um, but do we know what was at the center of their feud? I mean, um, we ask for them to eventually get to a point where it's guns really, are drawn. It's really, really, it's really minor. It's really nothing. It's just where things like why you didn't create me when I walk in, you didn't stand up on my principal, just those minor conflict matters because I myself been having conversations with the one bodyguard that I said has been raising these conflicts and I can tell you that it's nothing major, it's just petty, petty issues. It shouldn't have gotten to this far. Absolutely. That's probably even an understatement. Uh, Bongani Kina, thanks very much for uh, speaking to us and letting us in on what you know. Bongani is the Umshatuze Municipality's Communications Manager. Look, I, I sit on the anchor seat often, but it's not often where I'm completely aghast at an event like this. Two bodyguards um, drawing guns and shooting at each other fat fatally um, over what seems to be a really petty dispute in Umshatuze. It's a story... We'll certainly keep watching for you as it continues to unfold.